Hey everyone, Candlestick Ninja coming at you with an update. Uh, this will be a Bitcoin, VIX, S&P, Grand Supercycle, high level, um, you know, a reiteration of my trend bias and to update you as to where we stand, in my opinion, on May 14th. And I'll give you some more honed in timeframes of where I think the general range of where things will be, not only on the magnitude of the rise and or fall, but on the time estimates too, which is very, very is estimated, you know, you know, things could lag for a little bit, but I, I'll do my best. I got um, a Bitcoin uh, daily chart here and I have a prior from May 3rd. Uh, this is a grand super cycle, very high level S&P, um, Elliott Wave count with some notes, which if you follow my channel, I did some other videos referencing this, but I think it's in good order to have all these up uh, to sort of run through my high level trend bias. I'm not a day trader, I'm a swing trader. Back, you know, not to go off on a tangent, but what I've learned from that is setting your trend bias uh, at the top level so you can avoid whipsaw, finding market correlations, Bitcoin, VIX, and the S&P. Um, and I'll go into Riot on this one too. But starting here, you can see here, this is Bitcoin. Uh, I mentioned it before, I'm not gonna mention it too much, but, but down here was a diamond that I actually called, uh, I actually called it around 29,000. So we went up, we're up here. I called the diamond breakout, it went down, hence have, you know, wanting, needing stop losses, right? I called it a little early. I think I might've called it right here thinking it was gonna go up and it came down and then we broke out of it. I called the diamond breakout uh, up to 48,000. So essentially from here up to here, about 16, 15, 16,000, up to about 74,000. So I basically plotted, right? These Fibonacci ratios are not plotting this way. They plot, these Fibonacci ratios, were the ones where if you cut this part of the chart off, so if you just assume we're right here, these are the ones I plotted to find out where I thought the rise after a breakout would go. So basically you could see when you plot it from here down, right? The retracement of 0.382 would have been here, 0 0.618, 0 0.786, right? I projected a breakout to go to 0.618 and we ended up getting to that and then I, after a correction i saw that we're coming back for another rally up and i called the 57 i did not call anything above that in all transparency but once we got above 57 i did notice these trend lines right and i'm like you know what we could actually make it up to the mid 70s and i even said that on the next run up we could even go up to as high as 77 to 80,000. but my sentiment is slightly different now and i'll go over that too with you i, I mentioned this before you know we came up and if you look here, so this is technically, I think, a correction. But if you plotted like a, if you assume this was a one, two, three, four, and then almost a truncated fifth, this could be a wave one. This could be a wave two. This deal right here, as long as it's not the shortest, could be a wave three. And then you got a four. And then you can see here, you got a one, two, three, four, five, right? This could be a five. And then you could have this being A of an A, B, C. But if this is wave one, two, three, then we could have another wave up. And there is a small like five, 10 percent probability that we do make it up to 80,000 plus. But I am not betting on that. My plays are swings. So even if it does go up to that, I'm betting on a double top. And here's the reason why. You see these red lines here? I'm going to replot these out. So if you look at Bitcoin, essentially from pretty much Bitcoin at its inception, right, as close to zero as I can get up to this line, you can see we corrected down almost to 0.786, right? And if I plotted it correctly, it probably would. Yeah, you can see it's probably really more realistically plotted right here at this wave. And you can see we corrected down to 0.786. I mentioned before, and I'll mention it again, but there's a lot of people out there that maybe they're new to trading, maybe Bitcoin's so new. They think that Bitcoin's different than any other um, asset, it's not. It's actually more efficient um, than other investments. It's got over a trillion dollar market cap now. Uh, like uh, currencies, you know, foreign exchange is so efficient and technical analysis works so well because it's trillions of dollars turned over daily. I know it was like 10 trillion daily, then 20 trillion. So much money is turned over that it would take a central bank to manipulate it. You can't Warren Buffett can come in all he wants, you know, unless he's pulling together a cartel of people to really try to manipulate it, you can't. So the more efficient it is. Same with Bitcoin, it's a supply and de demand driven asset. So 
there's no it's, there's no exception just because people like it bitcoin's this new thing doesn't alter the fact that it's going to follow the same technical patterns and if anything a lot better than many smaller cap stocks you should normally get a healthy correction of 0.382 if it's a strong trend 0.236 is if it's a very strong trend but most of the time it will make it back to 0.618 for a full correction because it's five steps forward three steps back right and what is three divided by five it's about 60 percent. that's not a coincidence right so that's a normally a healthy correction. If we overshoot that, and you can see, that's why this diamond formed. That's the story that's being told. We overshot it because we overshot on the upside. What goes up must come down. What goes up too fast must come down too fast, right? We overshot the 0.618. That's the reason, in my opinion, and this is a little bit of assumptive, right? But that's why I believe these diamonds form. They, they, you know, people realize, algos realize, humans realize, oh, we overshot, so let's shoot up real quick. And then they're like, you know what, you shot up too much, let's shoot back a little bit. And then it forms these diamonds, which are reversal patterns. If you zoom out, you can see this diamond starts to become more of like an indifference paint candle pattern, right? So then after that, you know, so now we're back up here. In theory, if you retrace to a 0.786, you should get about 1.27, which is about what this is, to a truncated top, which means truncated as if, you know, it would come back up and it would double top here. We didn't. Right. So we came back up, we formed this pattern, came back down. Now this is a, a flag formation. Now, if this is a wave four, then it's possible that this thing could shoot way up. I'm swing trading, right? So I'm assuming that this is a wave five and this is an ABC here, or an A, B, C. But I do believe we need at least, and I did other analyses on this, we need at least the 67,000 for our first uh, jump up. And if we do get a double top, we should make it back up to about 73,000. And I will reference other analyses in this video that talk about this too. Uh, I found a really good one and I'll, I'll reference to give them a shout out. But you can see right here, 67477.618. It's my favorite golden mean. That it, it's, I, I live and die by the golden mean uh, Fibonacci ratio. So that's where the first leg up. If we get up to 67,000, riot should be between 12 and 14. If we make it up to 73,000, riot should be between 16 and 17. So if this is an A and this is a B, right? We could have a C and that would actually be healthy for Bitcoin, right? Or this could be a, a wave A and it could be a complex correction. If it needs to go deeper, then this could become an A of a higher order, right? And then we could have a B and then we could have a C. Ultimately, I do feel if we double top up here, I think my target is going to be 0.618, which is about 37 to 40,000. I'll jump out here. I don't want to go too far on this topic. I'm going to jump around a little bit because I don't want this video to be way too long, but it is very informative and important uh, that I do this overview. So you can see here, there's a lot of people talking about bearishness, right? But on the S&P 500, there is a bullish Harami candle from the same few weeks ago that we have another bullish candle on Bitcoin. And like I mentioned, there's correlations, you know, they follow each other, both risk on investments. So you can see here on a weekly time frame, one, two, three weeks ago, we have a bullish Harami. Though this has got wicks on the top and bottom, it is being engulfed or really Harami means to give birth in Japanese and they invented candlesticks. So basically when you, when you have this inside of it, like it's giving birth to that candle and then you have a bullish wick here, that is at least the double top, but because it's got so much bullish, bullish, bullish. That's why my next target up is 5,600, which is probably going to correspond, right, with Bitcoin being at 67,000. And I, I believe that we're going to correct either between 5,600 and 6,000, where a much bigger correction later in the year, which I'll get to in a moment. Right? So that's why I'm bullish on, on that. And also why I'm currently bullish over the very short term on Bitcoin still, because you can see one, two, this right here was two weeks ago on a weekly right? We have this bullish wick, which would correspond with this bullish wick right here. And then before that, you had this, you know, and identified as a bullish ram. So the fact that we came down this right here, where we retraced to from here up to here, this is actually a 0.23 correction. We came down, hit it, and now we're sort of like, you know, settled up and we have this bearish weekly looking thing. It wants to go bearish, right? But we're in the middle of the week. We have bullish this this right here, this correction, I believe is going to be bottomed out right here because we still need to come up to at least 67,000, which I just showed you. Regardless of what happens, we got to come up to about 67,000. That's my target on Bitcoin when riot should be 12 to 14. I think that will happen by next week. After that, it's hard to tell. Bitcoin tends to overshoot. We can go right up to a double top or we can come back down and then come back up again. It's hard to tell, but that's my first target on Bitcoin. You can see weekly is oversold. It's not that good to use oscillators on too high of time frames but if you're looking for technical divergence or if you're seeing crosses they still say things right so that's bitcoin uh zooming down on the daily 
you can see we have a nice flag here and there is a lot of bearishness is happening, but we're not on the higher level timeframes. And again, you want to avoid whipsaw. So we're not fully bearish yet. You can see um, a shoulder, shoulder, head, right? A little head and shoulder there. If you zoom in, you can see, right? It's an odd looking one. This could be viewed as a double top, right? But if we hold the ground right here, then this could be that double top could be negated and we could do channel sideways on if it if it's a net sideways indifference. But you can see right here, we're almost got a shoulder, shoulder, and like a head here. There's almost like a take. This would normally be a bearish pattern if you just look at this or a bullish pattern if you look at this part. But the fact that we have these two double tops, it's like almost like a sideways pattern, right? But what we need to do is we need to break above 63,000 and then we should fire right up to 65 and then 67. You can see we're a little overbought. Uh, the VIX came up a little bit and the VIX does drive risk on currencies, the S&P, which I believe is quarter related to Bitcoin. So the VIX does tell what Bitcoin will do to a degree, though they've moved in unison many times. Jumping over, I want to now show you, um, this is Riot, which is I'm sort of leading up to. But before that, I want to go back to my VIX chart, right? And again, if the VIX rises, then in general, the S&P 500 will fall. And if Bitcoin is correlated, like I'm convinced it is, then there should be like at least 80% correlation to Bitcoin, right? For the most part. Well, remember the VIX, you should not do technical analysis on the VIX alone. You should use it as a barometer or a tool. Do your technical analysis on your indices, on your stocks, use the VIX as a gauge, right? Because the VIX is derived or implied volatility from the S&P as a derived index. You can't buy the VIX directly. You have to use a proxy like UVIX, which is two times the VIX, uh, UVXY, which is, I think, one to two times or 1.5 times on average, uh, VXX, which is one for one in theory, right? But they buy futures and monthly futures and roll them. I honestly couldn't give you all the ins and outs. If you look at their their fund you know, prospectus and all that, you'll see it. But um, anytime that we've had a major event, and I mentioned this in other videos, you can see here, VIX, look, this was back in 2001, 2002. The, you know, we started getting signals and all, all the pros probably sort of knew that when we started getting down here in 01, it's like, eh, danger zone, danger zone, right? And then January of, uh, where are we at here? No, this is 93. 93, I'm sorry, 93 to 96, we were alerted ahead of time of what was to come, right? And if you look here, we actually didn't go full blown until, and we're, the VIX was actually relatively higher. It was at what our resistance is now around 19. And that's when we had the, the tech bubble version. But it all really started down here. This was a signal right here. And we're not going to have it, a delay this time. Uh, we're definitely not. If you look here, it went down, right? 07, 08, you can see all 05, 06, boom. That was the real estate crisis. Came back down. We started teetering here. Came down here in 17. So you can see it was a, it was a bit before. So, you know, could the major correction happen later? Yeah, but there's there's interim corrections like in early 2000s. Um, you had interim correction There's other ones that are happening, too. But you can see these black swan style events are always preceded by sub 12 tests between 1175 and as low as 855 to nine dollars. That's the danger zone. You can see that we tend to bounce very strongly off of 12 and you can see COVID. Boom. And I actually am drawing a line here because I believe that whether it happens here or here, it's going to happen during the next presidential election. Once we start getting sub 12 readings, it, the VIX is a good play to play long if you are um, a swing trader, speculator, so on and so forth, regardless, because it's going to get bounces and you could always buy or sell. Right. But it's important to know that's how I based my biases. I based my last call from 1950 down to 12, 1250, and I called the bounce from 1250, 13 back up. I'm calling right now the VIX short term to fall to 13 still, but I do believe we're going to have another bounce up to one of these trend lines. This time might be 18, 1850, and then we'll probably go down again. When they do lose money, they're probably going to make the VIX go down again and the markets go up, but then eventually, it, once it pierces below, that's the danger zone. So that's how I'm basing my bias. I'm going to be bullish until about the end of the year, Q4. I believe that they're going to either talk about or, or seriously lower, even at the expense of inflation, they're going to lower rates most likely because they want to make sure they're reelected. The current presidential party wants to end on a positive note. That's my opinion. Corruption is my bias. Unfortunately, that's what I think. Well, 
you know, so we can get one more thrust down if they do lower rates, stem me the markets. And then after that, I'm going to be very, very short on the markets and, and let things ride out, go long on the VIX, probably look at some key commodities, government, uh, you know, essential items that you need, um, you know, like utilities are possibly during the war times, you know, I'll look for some not so overvalued, you know, general dynamics uh, type of companies. So, yeah, so that's what I'm looking at there with the VIX. Now, one of my trades that I have, other than the ones I'll go over in other videos, this all leads up to Riot, right? And Riot is Riot Games. I know it's it's not Bitcoin, but it does track Bitcoin very well. And it's I haven't really done much with Mara, but I like Riot. Uh, whenever I want to buy Bitcoin, but I don't, I'm not doing it in the Bitcoin account, whether it's an IRA, so on and so forth, I like Riot. And you can see here, Riot has been forming, and I did this analysis, I'll share it in the video, but this is a four hour time frame. And I've been waiting here on this diamond to break out. And you can see we're right there. $10 is our breakout zone, right? And the VIX has really been, you know, low. So it's been just sort of, you know, forming this little breakout. Remember what I said about diamonds? I called that Bitcoin diamond. You know, you overshoot and then you come back to where you sort of should have been, but you overshoot the other way because, you know, we're emotional creatures. We're like, oh, sh it should it shouldn't have gone down there. Oh, it, went, it shouldn't have gone down there. Oh, and then they're like, you know what? This Then it becomes a big indifference reversal pattern. And then you jump up. I believe by Friday, we should be jumping out of this thing. And my target by Friday, latest Monday, right now, I have it officially called is eleven fifty to twelve dollars. I'm going to call it eleven seventy five. Right. I do believe we're going to get a correction here. I'm not sure if it'll be this deep. But then after that, my next target up by early uh, June, second week latest would be around fourteen to fourteen fifty. Then after a correction, which now I'm getting into like really assuming things, but Assuming we get up here and it's a strong trend, it could be a 0.23, which is about what this is, or 0.618, which would be somewhere between here and here. If I'm just eyeballing it, I do these ratios quite a bit, so I sort of know generally what they look like. Then we, my next target will be 16. Once we get to 14, I believe that uh, Bitcoin will be around 66 to 67,000. 16 to 17, we'd probably be around 70 to 73,000. I don't think we're going to make it too much higher. We might double top on Riot, which may or may not correspond with the BTC double top. But th these are my targets. I believe we're going to get up to the highest level in my analysis here by mid-June, late June latest. So again, Mike, uh, Candlestick Ninja, like, subscribe, follow. I just wanted to give you an overall bias. And you can see, I'll share this chart in my... Um, I'll reference it in the video description and I'll share this out. So it'll be on YouTube or I'll rumble as well. Uh, definitely go to ai.candlestickninja.com forward slash link tree. If you want to see all my other channels too, uh, trading view, stock twits, uh, I'm pretty much on all of them, right? I even got a discord um, that I'll share in there too, that I started a while back, but not many members on it. So if you're interested, uh, it's a contrarian based swing trading uh, discord. So you can see here around Q3, Q4, I'm going to most likely become bearish. And that's sort of where I'm estimating this thing to fall off. And then right here is like the danger zone of when I expect the VIX to start plotting really sub 12s and I'm going to get bearish. So again, Mike, uh, Candlestick Ninja, like, subscribe, follow. Sorry, this uh, video is a little long. I'll try to do a little bit of editing on it to get it below 20 minutes, but it's very good information. Hope you enjoyed. Feel free to comment, leave your feedback because this is a uh, a hive minded game is better for all of us to share even our little bit of expertise. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Good luck out there.